Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. There's quite a lot to go over in this episode, but before I jump into those hands, which there's quite a few of, I know a lot of subscribers to this channel are LA poker players, not Vegas players. So there's actually quite a few differences that I noticed and all of them are in favor of Vegas. So without any further ado, let me give you guys some of my thoughts on the best differences between the two locations. Number one for me, which is huge, is the rake. The rake structure in Vegas is a progressive rake, which means they take around 10% of the pot up to $5. In LA, they just take six or seven or $5, whatever the rake is for that room. They just drop it right away. In Vegas, they take 10% of the pot. So if you play a $10 pot, they drop a dollar. If you play $20 pot, they drop $2 and so on. The rake in Los Angeles can affect an hourly winning up to $15 an hour even. In Vegas, the progressive rake makes it so much easier to sustain a healthy win rate and just win more money overall, especially at the low stakes where rake is the most harmful to all players. The second main difference between LA and Vegas, pretty obvious but still worth mentioning, is just the amount of rooms you can pick from. There's tons of places to play poker all up and down the strip. If you're in a bad game or the wait's too long or whatever it is, you can just walk a block or half a block down the street, find another set of poker rooms. The third main difference I noticed and this might not so much be a positive, but just something that I noticed, it's kind of a personal preference, is gonna be the action. The players seem a little bit more tight in general in Vegas. I know there's this big hype about Vegas being this crazy gambler city, but when it comes to poker, the action in LA is actually way crazier than it is in Vegas. Obviously there's exceptions to this, but just in general, players in Vegas are gonna be a little more snug, and it's just overall a little bit more laid back as far as action goes. This could be a plus, depending on how you look at it. Could also be a bad thing. It leaves a lot more room for bluffing and stealing pots from passive opponents, but at the same time, there's just not as much action to be found, especially when you're trying to go for big value. The fourth thing is gonna be my personal favorite, which is the buy-in structures. You can play so much deeper as far as big blinds goes, in Vegas than you can in LA. For the one three no limit at the win, you can buy in up to $500, which is almost 200 big blinds. It's a huge difference and it's just honestly an awesome thing. I wish the entire country could offer this. Anyway, that's my quick spiel about why Vegas is the promised land for poker players. Sure, there's obviously advantages to LA, but I'm not gonna lie. I kind of fell in love with playing poker in this city. Without any further ado, let's get into some poker hands. I played at four different places throughout the vacation, but I'm only gonna include three of those locations in this episode. The next episode is gonna be a completely separate one based entirely on one session I played at the Aria. For now, just this episode is gonna cover hands from MGM Grand, Planet Hollywood, and The Win. Anyway, let's just jump right in. Starting with Planet Hollywood, one, two, no limit, and for 300. 150 big blinds, let's go. off with a bang. Early position opens to $10. I look down at queen jack of hearts and make the call in position and the small blind makes the call. I got a clip of the flop just happened to be filming. I'll roll that for you guys right now. Oh my gosh! Wow! Oh, wow. This is unbelievable. Yup, warm welcome to Vegas, flopping the absolute nuts with a redraw to the straight flush. 10, nine, eight with two hearts. One of the best flops we're ever gonna get with this particular hand. Even better is that action continues. The small blind checks. I'm expecting the early position player to check this type of board texture a lot just because it favors me and maybe even the small blind more than it favors him. But to my surprise, he puts out a C bet of $20. 
no complaints here. I just make the call, trying to keep the small blind in the hand. And not only does he stay in the hand, but the small blind comes in for a check raise. Makes it $65 to go. The early position player makes the call. And now the action's back on me. We have the nuts and we're facing a check raise and a call. At this point, the small blind has around $140 behind and the early position raiser has around maybe two or 300 behind. So it's kind of an awkward spot because if a player here has two pairs or a set, I don't want a card to come off that kills the action. At the same time, I could potentially make my opponents fold worse hands if I put in the raise. Although I don't hate either option, I decided to just get the money in right here. No fancy play syndrome. Anyway, as played, I put in the small raise, make it 180 to go. The small boy doesn't think for too long and shoves the rest of his stack in there and the early position player folds. So we're off to the turn in river with no more action to be had. I show my cards right away, not trying to slow roll anyone. The small blind shows 10-8, so he flopped two pair, still got some outs against us, but we hold, turn and river come clean, and we scoop the first pot in Vegas. Pretty sizable pot, especially considering that this is just one, two, no limit. On to the next hand. About an hour later, things are still going pretty good here at Planet Hollywood, but no major hands to report until this hand comes up. There's four lamps and I look down at seven, six off suit on the button. I'm happy to play connected cards in position, last to act on every street. So put in the call, the small blind calls and the big blind checks. The flop comes three, four, five with two clubs. So we flop the nuts yet again, action checks all the way to me. I put in a bet of $20. There's three callers and we're off to see a turn. I'm praying for a clean turn and we get pretty much the best one in the deck. It's the deuce of diamonds. So now anyone with an ace makes a straight and anyone with a six also makes a straight. To my surprise, the small blind, who is also the opponent from the previous queen jack of hearts hand, leads out for 55. A middle position player makes the call and now that action's back on me yet again with a ton of action ahead and we're sitting here with the nuts. What do you guys do in this spot? Well, the obvious question is, what's the stack sizes? The small blind who let out in this card has about 100 behind, and the middle position player has around 120. So I think there's just one obvious move. Once again, there's a ton of rivers that could kill the action, as in another club, or a seven, or maybe the board pairing, etc. So I just decided to get the money in right here. There's not enough behind to even consider any kind of fancy play, so I go all in, the small blind player thinks forever. He goes, there's no way you flopped us straight again, right? Thinks forever, makes the call, and the middle position player folds. I show him the seven six right away. He shows me a six. Sorry, man, that's no good. We get a clean river and scoop yet another pretty big pot here at Planet Hollywood. Decided to wrap it up right here, head back to the hotel, grab some dinner, relax, and then go for a late night session at MGM Grand. One, two, no limit, $300. Let's see if we could run it up again. All right, in this first hand, there's three limps, and I look down at pocket kings from late position. I put it in open to $15, the big blind calls, and the first limper calls. So three ways to a flop of ace, ace, queen. Checks all the way to me. I'm happy to just check it back and control the pot a little bit right here with some decent showdown value. Real quick, wanted to share something with you guys. MGM properties in Las Vegas don't do bad beat jackpots. So if the turn was an ace, it's really not as exciting as it would seem here in LA. Anyway, that being said, Still three ways to a turn, which comes in offsuit eight. This time the big blind checks and the first limper puts out a bet of $35. He could be doing this with a ton of different hands, not looking to go anywhere just yet, put in the call and the big blind makes the call as well. The river comes a seven, pretty clean run out. The big blind checks for a third time and this time the early position player checks it over to me. Given how the hand has played out, I'm pretty sure I have the best hand. So I decided to go for some value from a queen or maybe even a non-believing pocket pair at this point. I put in a bet of $110, and to my surprise, the big blind pretty quickly announces all in. 
for around 250 or 260. The early position player folds pretty quick. Action's back on me, and I don't think there's too much thought to be had. If this player was trapping with an ace, he should have been check raising the turn. If he is capable of playing an ace this sneaky, more power to him, but I'm not looking to fold. I think I have the best hand almost every time, so pretty quickly toss in the call, and he announces queen. I let him know that's no good, show the kings, shows me a queen, and mucks the other card. So not sure what he was thinking there on the river, but I'm happy with my play, and I'm glad I went for some value on the river on a board that doesn't look too exciting for pocket kings. Scoop another big pot and move on to the next hand. A few hours later, we run into this interesting hand. There's three or four limps, and I look down at pocket tens from the big blind. At this point, the table had been loosening up a little bit. I decided to make it $20 to go, being that there's limpers ahead and we're gonna be out of position. I get called by the first limper and the button. So three ways to a flop, which comes king, 10, six. Being that there's a flush draw and straight draws available, as well as us not blocking top pair, there's a ton of value to be had. So I continue for $40. The first limper makes the call and the button folds. So heads up to a turn, which is a pretty gross card. It's the ace of diamonds. It completes all the major draws, including queen, jack, and all diamond draws. For sure not my favorite card, especially having such a strong hand myself. It's gonna be hard to get away from this one. I check it over to him and he puts in a bet of $40. For that price, I'm happy to make the call and continue. Although I'm not sure where I stand in the hand, it could be a lot of different hands he's betting this sizing with. So still heads up to a river, which is the Jack of Clubs. Pretty nasty card, any queen makes a straight now, and our hand has gone down dramatically in value. I check it over to him one more time and he puts in a bet of $130. I don't see this player value betting worse than a set of tens here, so it's pretty much a bluff catcher at this point. I think about it for a minute and just decide to let it go and he shows me the nine of clubs. Not sure what the point of that is. I don't know if he's trying to frustrate me or I don't know. Anyway, no love for the pocket tens that time on a pretty disastrous run out. Decide to call it a day after that won about 100 or 120 at MGM Grand. So overall, the first day was a success. Time to go back to the room, get some sleep, and head to the win the next day. One three, no limit, in for $500. Let's go. So here we are playing 1-3 no limit at the win. In the first hand, there's three limps and the late position player makes it $15 to go. Not the biggest sizing, especially over a few limpers. So when I look down at ace 10 offsuit from the small blind, I decide to squeeze. I don't wanna play this hand multi-way, but I think it's a little too strong to just let it go. So I'm fine with the three bet or fold. This time I decide to three bet, make it $60 to go. One of the limpers makes the call and the $15 raiser in late position makes the call. So three ways to a flop, which comes ace, eight, eight. So we have top pair, somewhat weak kicker, given that it's a three bet pot. I think this is one of those spots where we're gonna be way ahead or way behind. So I check it over to the first position player. He checks it over to the $15 better in late position, who puts out a bet of $40. For that sizing, pretty easy call, I think. So that's what I decided to do. And to my surprise, the player in early position also makes the call. So still three ways to a turn here, which comes the nine of diamonds, bringing in some straight draws and some flush draws. Although I'm not sure how relevant those are gonna be given that this is a three bet pot and we all continued on a pretty dry flop. I check it one more time, early position checks, and this time late position bets once again. Kind of worried that we might be up against ace jack or maybe even ace queen, ace king, given how passively some players play those hands pre-flop. Nothing to do except call though, especially for the sizing, and the early position player this time folds. The river comes a pretty interesting card. It's an offsuit queen. So at this point we're chopping with all aces, except for obviously ace king and ace queen. And I think a vast majority of his range, although I don't like to put players specifically on one hand, is gonna be ace jack or maybe even the same hand that we have. 
I contemplate for a long time here about just jamming all in and getting him to fold a chop. Obviously, if he has ace queen, he's gonna be value betting this river, but I'm expecting him to check back all aces, including ace king at this point. I think about it for a while, and although I could be value owning myself against ace king, I think it's a play with a lot of merit. Shoving all in at this point, with this player having around 200 behind, could get him to fold a better ace or maybe even the same hand. After a while though, I can't pull the trigger. I just decided to check it over to him. He checks back and shows ace jack. So we chop it up. I get pretty frustrated with myself at this point. I'm not gonna lie because it's one of those weird moments. I'm sure you guys have felt it where you're just in the zone and you lock your player in on pretty much one hand and one hand only. That's how I felt about this guy having ace jack. And I'm a little disappointed in myself for not being able to pull the trigger there on the river and put him to the test. However, at least we don't lose, given that we were in pretty deep trouble going into the river. Moving on to the next hand. In the next hand, a recreational player who had been very, very, very shy with his money puts in an open under the gun to $20. I think it was his first pre-flop raise the entire session. And it's a pretty big sizing, so I'm actually squarely putting this guy on aces, kings, or queens, maybe ace-king suited. It folds around to me, and I look down at 9-7 of hearts on the button. Not sure what better cards we could ask for to crack and overpair with, so I happily put in the call, given that it's going to be pretty easy to navigate against this player's specific range in this hand. Everyone else folds, so we're heads up to a flop, which comes pretty sweet for these 9-7 of hearts. It's king-8-6 with two hearts. He doesn't waste any time and puts in a bet of $60. I'm pretty sure it's probably ace king or aces at this point. And given that this player had been extremely scared to put in the money, I decide to do what might be a mistake, although I kind of like it looking back, put in a raise and see if he's willing to put in all his money with just one pair. I don't mind just calling and realizing our equity, but with how big the pot is gonna be later on, and us not having that much money behind, I think it's gonna be harder to bluff. And also we're a favorite by just a little bit with our monster draw versus an over pair. Let's put this guy to the test. I go all in for around 220 or 230. That's how much he had behind after the $65 bet. He thinks about it forever, asks for time, and eventually puts in the call. Sure enough, he shows pocket aces. So we're off to the races here. Pretty high variance style line I took in this hand. I'm pretty happy with it though, especially when the turn comes a three of diamonds and the river's a three of clubs. That's right, you thought I was gonna win this hand? Nope, Brick City baby. That wrapped up the session. I lost around 400 at the win, which kind of sucks because that's the room I was most excited to play at, but it is what it is. Had a good experience there. We'll definitely be going back at some point this month or next month. And that was the last of the interesting hands. So those were the most interesting hands from the three properties mentioned, Planet Hollywood, MGM Grand, and The Wind. As mentioned, I have another video coming up next based on the Aria and a session I played there. So subscribe if you guys wanna see that one. Should be coming out in a couple of days, but that's it for this one. I hope you guys found those hands interesting. For all you guys who said what's up in Vegas, I appreciate it. There was way more people that recognized me than I ever expected, so it's humbling and awesome to meet you guys in person, meet face to face instead of just always talking through a camera. Anyway, that wraps up this video. Thank you guys for the support. Feel free to leave a comment. I try to respond as quick as possible. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. It really helps the channel grow. And once again, I just really appreciate all you guys' support. I hope you guys run good out there, and I'll see you next video. Peace.